Hello, and thanks for joining us. Today we will be exploring Nanomechanics Nano Indenter. It is a mechanical microprobe system that can be used for nano indentation to measure hardness and elastic modulus, viscoelastic properties of storage and loss moduli, and to perform force displacement tests of up to 50 micronewtons on structures. Due to its mostly autonomous interface, a dedicated operator is not needed for system operations. With a high spatial resolution, small footprint, and substrate effect correction. Its applications include measuring the, pro uh, measuring the properties of materials such as metals, thin films, and polymers. Let's take a look at the apparatus. Here we have the inside chamber of the nano indenter. To further stabilize the system, this chamber sits on top of an optical table to minimize vibrations in the machine. The sample tray is magnetic, allowing for easy retrieval and placement. You can place up to four different mounts into here, with fused silica always occupying one of the slots for data verification and tip calibration. Here, we have the Inforce 50 actuator with a Berkovich tip, which allows for us to take measurements on the nano indenter. Finally, we have the microscope that will allow for us to look at our target surface and make sure that we're performing the correct tests. Now that that's out of the way, let me show you a couple ways to prepare your sample for usage in the nano indenter. Depending on your sample's material and characterization, certain mounting methods will have a higher propensity of success than others. Typically, the sample's level of tolerance to heat and pressure serves as good measures for the type of mounting required. Let's go over a few of those methods. At Hopkins, machines such as the TP7001 mounting press are the primary method for mounting samples that have a high tolerance to heat and pressure. With a wide number of mounting powders of different compositions available, you can use this method to mount materials such as metals, semiconductive wafers, and ceramics. Really, you can use it for materials that have a melting point above 600 Celsius. To start off, you'll want to get your sample and anchor it into the mounting press. Let's see, let's put it right there. You wanna make sure it has like a good surface beneath it. And then, now that I'm sure that it's stable, I'm going to ram it all the way down until it gets to the bottom. Now, with this conductive mounting compound that I have over here, I'm just going to take enough of it so that the compartment here is about three quarters full. Just add a little bit more here. Alrighty, that should be enough mounting powder there. Now that I have my sample and my mounting powder into here, I'm just going to take the top off of here and then just completely rotate this. Bring it to over here, get it nice and tight, and then just loosen it just half a turn, okay? Now, once that's set, I'm just going to press run slash stop over here. It's going to increase the pressure and start ramping up the temperature. In probably about 20 minutes, I'll be able to have my sample mounted. Once that finishes, I'll be able to bring it over to the Tegramin 20 polisher and set it to grind and polish the surface to make it nice and smooth. However, Let's say that you don't want to permanently mount your sample, or that you want to be able to reuse it again. Let's move on to a different method to help quell your qualms. Crystal Bond is a temporary adhesive used primarily for holding crystals, glass, and ceramics. With its low melting point, it becomes very easy to mount samples that are sensitive to pressure and temperature, such as polymers, rubber, or any material with a melting point below 600 Celsius. To start off, you'll want to heat a sample stub that looks like this to about 70 degrees Celsius. So on this hot plate here, it's about six or seven. And since I've been heating it for a little while, you just want to make sure that once it's heated that you take your crystal bond right here, grab hold of your sample mount, and then you just start just put a small layer of crystal bond onto there. 
Now the next step will vary based on if your sample is sensitive to heat or not. If your sample is not sensitive, then all you have to do is just simply place your sample onto the sample, uh, onto the sample stub right now. So I just have some steel over here. Let me show you right there. So I'm just going to place this onto there. And I want to make sure that I just move it around a little bit. Make sure that when you play, uh, pick a location to touch so that you can move it around, that you don't put it in the area that you're actively going to be looking at. Now, if your sample is sensitive to heat, what you're going to be doing instead is you're going to be placing a glass slide here. So I just managed to pick one up over here. And then you're just going to place it onto there, making sure that once again, you just move it around, try and get rid of any excess air bubbles. Now, once that's done, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take these samples off and put them onto the cooling block that we have at the back here so that you'll allow for them to come back down to room temperature. Alrighty, now that that's getting ready, what you'll want to do in this case is start preparing your second adhesive. So uh, what, I, what I'm going to use for right now is I'm going to use this uh, super glue that I have over here. But you can also use something like epoxy or whatnot. And then so for our, for our heat sensitive sample, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be affixing it onto the glass slide off of the hot plate so that uh, there's zero chance of it getting damaged. So what I'm going to do, this doesn't seem as hot anymore, so I'm just going to place my sample over to here get this out of the way so that you guys can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a little bit of super glue onto here. And then I'm just going to drop some HDPE onto there. Because HDPE, HDPE has a low melting point. And there we go. Okay, now that my sample is on there, you guys pretty much know how to mount your samples for the nano indenter now. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to prep and run these samples in the nano indenter so that you guys can take the relevant information that you need from your samples off of there. See you next time.